least alone. My hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. In wisdom is a spirit, intelligent, holy, unique, manifold, subtle, agile, clear, unstained, certain, not baneful, loving the good, keen, unhampered, beneficent, kindly, firm, secure, tranquil, all-powerful, all-seeing, and pervading all spirits, though they be intelligent, pure, and very subtle. For wisdom is mobile beyond all motion, and she penetrates and pervades all things by reason of her purity. For she is an aura of the might of God, and a pure effusion of the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, naught that is solid enters into her, for she is the refulgence of eternal light, the spotless mirror of the power of God, the image of His goodness. And she who is one can do all things and renews everything while herself perjuring and passing into holy souls from age to age, she produces friends of God and prophets. For there is not God loves, be it not one who dwells with wisdom. For she is fairer than the sun, and surpasses every constellations of the star. Compared to the light, she takes precedence. For that, indeed, Night supplants, but wickedness prevails not over wisdom. Indeed, she reaches from end to end mightily and governs all things well. Responsorial Psalm your word is forever, O Lord. Your word, O Lord, endures forever. It is firm as the heavens. Your word is forever, O Lord. Through all generations, your truth endures. You have established the earth, and it stands firm. Your word is forever, O Lord. According to your ordinances, they still stand firm. All things serve you. Your word is forever, O Lord. The revelation of your words sheds light, giving understanding to the simple. Your word is forever, O Lord. Let your countenance shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. Your word is forever, O Lord. Let my soul live to praise you, and may your ordinances help me. Your word is forever, O Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus said in reply, The coming of the kingdom of God cannot be observed, and no one will announce, Look, here it is, or there it is. For behold, the kingdom of God is among you. 
Then he said to his disciples, The days will come when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man. The days will come when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. There will be those who will say to you, Look, there he is, or look, here he is. Do not go off. Do not run in pursuit. For just as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer greatly and be rejected by this generation. Today, November 11, is the memorial of St. Martin of Tours, Bishop. Born about 316 AD in the region that is now Western Hungary, Martin was the son of pagan parents. While he was still a child, his father was transferred to Pavia in northern Italy. And it was here that he first was drawn to Christianity. He horrified his father, a tribune in the army, by studying to become a Christian. But as a soldier's child, he was required to, to serve in the army. He was held in chains until he agreed to take his military oath, which he then honored. Although his youth was spent as a cavalryman in the Roman army, he continued to yearn for something more. Legend has it that Martin, while he was a young soldier stationed in the land of Gaul, now France, chanced upon a shivering, miserable beggar clutching his rags about him in a bitter cold one day. He noticed no one was helping the man, but Martin had nothing with him but the soldier's clothes he wore. Overcome with concern, Martin removed his heavy wool cavalry cloak and cut it in two. Then he gave half to the beggar. Later, Martin had a vision in which Jesus was wearing the half cloak he'd given to the beggar. In his dream, Jesus told the angels around him that it had been given to him by Martin. Martin immediately became baptized, and not so long after, he refused to fight the invading Franks on grounds of conscience, landing in prison. When the invaders suddenly decided to enter peace negotiations, Martin was released and obtained a discharge from the army. As a free man, he began his commitment to Christianity in earnest, studying under famous scholars and teachers of the era. For many years, he preached and evangelized throughout the countryside, living as a missionary and helping the poor and the sick. His reputation for holiness attracted other monks, and they formed what would become the Benedictine Abbey in Liguge, the oldest known abbey in Europe. Soon he was considered the holiest man in France. At a time when bishops were still chosen by the people, he was sought out to serve as a bishop after the previous bishop died. Everyone knew Martin was too humble to accept the position, so they resorted to trickery, asking him to come to the church to care for the sick woman. A well-known story surrounds the incident. When Martin realized their real purpose, he hid from the people of Tours in a shed full of geese. The swalking geese quickly revealed his hiding place, and he reluctantly agreed to, to serve as bishop. 
When Martin was consecrated in 371, he chose to continue living a life of humility and compassion, rather than adopting the rich lifestyle of most bishops. He continued caring for the sick and those in great need, and he developed a reputation of serving the lives of prisoners. He made rounds of the parishes in the area, established many ones, and started several monastic communities. In artistic works, St. Martin is often symbolized as a cavalryman on the horse, cutting his cloak for a beggar, or with a flock of geese, recalling the story surrounding his election as Bishop of Tours. St. Martin's Abbey and University are proud to bear the name of this illustrious and selfless patron, whose feast day is celebrated here and in many areas of Europe on November 11. Let us pray. Blessed Saint Martin of Tours, full of the Spirit of the Lord, always having an inexhaustible charity for the needy. You, full of love and generosity, when you saw a beggar that was freezing from cold, without knowing that in truth he was Christ, did not doubt to give him half of your cape, and did not give it completely to him since the other half belonged to the Roman army. You who did not seek recognition, but only to favor your neighbor, found glory before the Lord. And when the Savior appeared to you dressed with a half cape, so as to express appreciation of your gesture, and he told you, Today you covered me with your mantle, you decided to no longer serve the army, and dedicate your life to God and to the salvation of souls. Being from then on a propagator of faith and a holy man totally dedicated to the whomever was in need. Amen. <music>